Okay, so um, I'll just introduce myself while we're waiting in case anyone else is joining us. My name is Rebecca and I will be the moderator for this webinar. I work in the international marketing and recruitment team and I'm very happy to be here today. We are hosting this webinar as part of a series of um, webinars relating to different subject areas. And that's something that we're doing as part of our applicant weeks um, program, which is over 35 different uh, webinars relating to general um, application queries, but also these subject specific days where we have an opportunity to talk to program staff and also to students. And this webinar is so that you can have a chat with other students, um, ask questions uh, to people who are studying the subject area that you're interested in. So I'm going to just share in the chat here um, some uh, a web page for uh, our applicant weeks in case you would like to join us for any of our other events. Um, that's just shared there for any uh, future queries that you might have about our other events. So just to explain how this uh, session will work, we have a Q&A. So those who are watching, you are really, really welcome to ask questions. Maybe you see a student here who's studying the program that you would like to study and you want to know more about what it's like for them. Do they do group work? How is their day? Um, what kind of assessments do they have? These kinds of things. What are the resources that are available to them? If you want to ask them something about how it is for them studying this program, then please go ahead and ask that in the Q&A. And then if you see somebody else ask a question that you think is interesting, then feel free to upvote it so that we know that this is a popular query. In the meantime, I will also ask um, the students here today uh, other questions that are commonly asked by our students. So we'll just basically record this and we'll chat and we'll ask questions. Of course, because there's lots of students joining us today um, from all of these different programs, then I won't be able to ask everybody every question. So I'll just jump around and, and ask for a range of different answers from our lovely panelists who are joining us today. So let's get going and I think we can briefly uh, introduce ourselves. <laughs> so I will ask um, each of our student panelists to just say their name, where they're from and what they're studying here at Lund. And I will start with Roger. Hi, uh, my name is Roger. I am doing, I'm from Brazil and I'm doing my master's degree in logistics and supply chain management. Nice to have you with us. And then Priliani. Hi, uh, my name is Priliani. I'm from Indonesia. Currently, I'm on the second year of master program in food technology and nutrition. And Gabriela. Hello, everybody. My name is Gabriela, and I'm a second year master student of the program pharmaceutical technology, and I come from Guatemala. Great. Today. Hello, I'm Zidai. I'm from India. I'm currently pursuing master's in production and materials engineering, and currently I'm in first year. Thank you. Uh, Prashant? Hey, hey, uh, I'm Prashant and I'm, I come from Nepal. I'm currently in my second year of uh, sustainable energy engineering master's program here at Lund University. And Max? Hello, I am Maximiliano, or Max for short. I am from Chile and I am on my second year of water resources engineering. And finally, we have Swarup. Hey, I'm Swarup from India. I'm studying a second year of master's in wireless communication. Thank you to all of you for being here today. I hope it's going to be really useful for the students to ask you your experience. As I said earlier, please, everybody who's watching, feel free to put questions in the Q&A and we'll definitely get to those. In the meantime, I'm going to start with some questions um, about this uh, subject area. Um, so I'm going to just choose a couple of you guys to, to talk to talk to me about what your favorite thing is about studying your subject area at Lund. This morning we had um, sessions with program staff from various programs, um, including we had wireless communication, water resources engineering, and um, also sustainable energy engineering. So I think I'm going to ask you guys uh, what your favorite things are so we can see whether it matches up with what the program staff told me this morning. Um, so I'll start with you, Swarup. What's your favorite thing about studying wireless communication at Lund? Mm. One thing that I can say is uh, the program at Lund is quite advanced compared to the other universities around the world. 
So the theory that we learn in class, we get to implement it in various assignments as well as practices in lab. That is an experience I never thought that I would get here and I would consider that to be the best part of it. Moreover, the professors here really care whether we are able to learn the subject or not and the feedback from them is really useful. And that is an experience that's been a very long time that I had. So I'm really uh, glad that I came to do my master's here. That's so nice to hear. And Max, how is it for you studying water resources engineering? What's your favorite thing? Um, I would say, uh, well, Swedish industry has been in the forefront of water development towards water treatment. Uh, it shares, of course, with other countries, but uh, it has been very interesting to see also in practice what uh, we've been learning in school. I, I especially have an a inclination towards water treatment, and there have been uh, instances or, or an opportunities of collaboration with water treatment facilities that I didn't expect it was going to be uh, as close as it has been so far. And water treatment, uh, new technologies and advancements are being implemented really close to Lund. So that has been really, really exciting. That sounds great. Um, Prashant, what do you uh, like the most about studying sustainable energy engineering here? Uh, firstly, I think it's so diverse, like I have friends coming from so many different backgrounds and that is one of the most exciting things when we talk about energy as a whole it has so many dimensions, we get to learn about batteries, hydrogen, there is also wind and solar and power systems, electric vehicles and whatnot is so much diverse and we have this um, good uh, way of understanding all these di different dimensions of uh, energy as a whole here. Also with a, an aspect of sustainability, which is quite important for future energy systems. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I can be one of the pioneers who is like going to develop these energy systems as a whole. So this, I think, is a very important aspect of the program that we study, and that uh, is that re I really like about the master's program here. Brilliant, thank you. We actually have just had a question come in for you, uh, Prashant, about uh, sustainable energy engineering. And perhaps you already started to answer this a little because they ask um, what some final interesting things are about the school in general. And you've already kind of started to talk about that. But also they ask about the, which campus the energy, uh, sustainable engineer, energy engineering uh, program is on. And uh, you can answer that if you want, and maybe say something about the environment in which you're studying, like what are the buildings like, the labs, etc. cetera. Uh, okay, I mean, firstly, uh, we are currently at uh, Chemistry Central building on the fourth floor where the department is. I think we are going to move out to our home the building, which is the M building very soon. Uh, I think it's going to be next year, I guess. But at the moment, we are in Chemist Centrum. And uh, I think, uh, firstly, the environment is super interdisciplinary for, because we have people from different backgrounds and the, the conversations are really diverse. We end up talking about so many different stuff sometimes. And I would say also the fun part of learning is we have professors from different uh, dynamics like um, uh, heat transfer, uh, there's a problem, like uh, topics regarding wind and solar. So I think all in all, I think uh, we have so many different uh, dimensions and it becomes very interesting to talk about energy as a whole uh, as well, because uh, it's a big issue all over the world when we are moving into renewables and when we have this uh, different uh, conversations, it gets really interesting for me, I guess, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And um, I guess I can have a show of hands. You're all based on the Lund campus, right? The main, yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe I can ask somebody what their impression was of the, the city itself, because I guess that's maybe where that question is coming from. Like, what's it like on the campus and how that relates to the city? So perhaps I will choose um, Priliani. Would you like to say something about the city and the campus and, you know, what that's like? Yeah, I have to say like uh, Lund is not a big city, but then it's really convenient for us for traveling. I mean, uh, many public transportation already provided in here. Even you can use bicycle or you want to take bus or a tram. So it's really convenient for students 
uh, who want to travel to the campus. And then also um, Loon itself, I have to say the building is really spread around the city. So yeah, even our, our building mostly uh, for engineering, not in the middle or, or the center of the city, but it's really reachable with many things of transportation. And then, yeah, everything I have to say, uh, Loon provides many things, especially if you want to learn maybe kind of the social activities, or maybe you want to learn another thing kind of the sport or art activities, it's already provided in here. And yeah, it will be easier for international students. That's nice. Yeah, because it is such a, you know, accessible uh, size. So I guess like whatever's going on is not going to be very hard to take part, which is nice. And like you mentioned, the actual buildings themselves are like throughout the little city. So it's like I, I was asking the question like about the city and about the campus, but actually it's quite hard to separate those things apart because you have the campus so centrally. So, yeah, that's great. Thank you. And I would actually like to ask because we have today with us people joining um, from all over the world and something that people sometimes ask is if there was something which surprised you when you arrived in Sweden or something that was a bit of a culture shock, a good thing, a bad thing, something that was like um, just a surprise, the process of moving countries. So I'm going to ask um, Gabriella, did you, uh, could you remind me, you say you come from, is it Guatemala? Yes, I come from Guatemala. So is there a big uh, culture shock for you? What have you found the experience uh, moving to Sweden? How have you found the experience, I should say? And was there something that surprised you? I think that the cultural shock that I had was with my professors, because here in Sweden, you can approach your professors by name. And in my country, you have to approach them by title. So I think that the professors are like really friendly and open and being able like to call them by their name makes you have like more like um, a friendship relationship with them. Like it's easy to approach. If you have like any question, you don't feel like that shy. So I think that, that was like a really different thing from my country here. Cool, thank you. And do, do the rest of you agree that the teachers are approachable? And yeah, I see lots of nodding. That's great. Um, so maybe, um, Swarup, I can ask you how you found the transition as well coming to Sweden. Was there anything that surprised you? I come from a pretty hot region as my country as a whole. So the temperature, especially in the winters, was quite a surprise for me. And I was also surprised by how nice people are around here. The general impression is that uh, Swedes don't even respond to you even if you speak to them. At least that's what I uh, used to hear a lot before I came to learn, but uh, the whole impression is totally different here. And uh, the most surprising thing is the amount of importance given to pedestrians and bicycles. You know, people in my country, they cause an accident and don't even look back and just walk away. And uh, people, I see cars, trucks stopping just for me to cross the road. So that is quite surprising here. Yeah, I remember the opposite experience for me when I visited <laughs> India and being like, oh, nobody is stopping. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to hear that that also works the other way as well. Cool. OK. Uh, Rebecca, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. So I was going to say, I think we can maybe talk a little bit about the um, academic environment and maybe what the classes and the academic environment is like. So we started to talk about how the teaching relationship is very positive, which is lovely to hear. Um, maybe I can uh, choose Roger here because you haven't said something for a little while um, and ask you how what is the classroom like for you so how many students is in your are in your classes do you have lectures seminars that kind of thing um yeah just a little bit of information about the the experience in the classroom and the academic experience yeah sure uh I, at least for me it's the whole package i have classes i have labs i have seminars guest lectures and I can say that's also something that's very different from the experience that I was uh, used to, uh, because uh, although the, the 
the class itself is not that different because uh, otherwise uh, you are always learning about the the same stuff but the way that's done is very different so uh there is something here that calls my attention it's that the teachers really want the uh students to participate in class uh both directly and also by discussing with each other so there is uh, a lot of time in class where the teacher just says okay just now discuss between yourselves uh and then in five minutes we come back to class and try to discuss together with the whole class if we can learn something different and also uh i feel that the the labs and the uh, guest lectures from people from industry or companies are very well thought to be integrated with the stuff that we are learning class on that specific moment so for me that's also very nice that sounds really cool yeah so you get a quite variety then that sounds great um and Sidé, how is it for you you're in a um, production and materials engineering program so yeah. what is your class like how many people and what kinds of uh, learning? So teams? it's around 17 to 18 people in my master's program uh, with, uh, I would say, diverse student background. But usually it's like uh, 40 students consisting of people from extension program, maybe someone doing bachelor's. It's like uh, people here cover five years program, three years of bachelor's and two years of master's level. And rest of the people are international. So yes, I can consider that it's 60% of Swedish people and 40% of international background. Also, uh, collaboration is the word I would say, because uh, I cannot sense uh, I cannot sense the competitive uh, environment in my lecture rooms. So it's all about growing and working together, learning together. Professors also does uh, try to make us uh, understand our strengths during the course. So technically projects are done in the group, which is kind of a important thing as we sit with people who are from different perspectives and background. We try to understand each other. Yeah. Great, thank you. And yeah, I think it's good to know that group work is quite a common part of the Swedish classroom because that is can, that can be quite different depending which academic uh, background you come from basically. So I, I'm glad you, you mentioned the idea of collaboration and how important that is. Um, yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay, so I would now like to um, ask uh, a little bit about uh, the idea of work placements or um, internships, depending what you call them. Maybe some programs, it's more like a research, uh, research placement, for example. And I know that a couple of you are currently doing your thesis in collaboration with companies. So perhaps I can um, ask a little bit about how that's working. So I think Swarup, you mentioned that you're currently doing your thesis in collaboration with a company. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I'm right now working with Sony on oh, uh, 60. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about it and how that's been, maybe the process of how you found it, um, like found the actual um, connection in the first place and then what you're doing now? I think one thing that is most important to mention is that in, in order to find a job or a temporary job or any kind of research position, your connections matter. And uh, lucky for me, a professor who used to teach in LTH in my program is uh, now part-time working at Sony. He was the one who first introduced that topic to me. And uh, I told him that I was really interested. And uh, then we had an interview. After, the, after I passed the interview, he was quite happy with my skill set and he told me to find a project partner to do it along with someone else. I asked one of my friends and uh, luckily we both of us passed the interviews and uh, now we are working in Sony. The idea is to use a concept called RIS, RIS uh, Reflective Intelligence Surfaces. It is a core concept in 6G research and uh, we are using ray tracing experiments to find out how this performance is being evaluated. Uh, the work culture in uh, any company in Sweden is quite good, especially about the work-life balance. I've recently come to enjoy the company atmosphere, actually working in a new physical location with lots of perks and uh, really cool people surrounding me. It was really uh, an amazing experience. You get to talk with some brilliant minds over lunch with a casual discussion on random topics. Uh, today, we were discussing about different countries and different time zones, and it has nothing to do with what you're doing. 
but uh, it's really fun to just engage with people in a conversation and to even realize that uh, I, I, it doesn't feel like I've just been doing started in the research since one week. People there know me by, by my name already, and uh, we've, we have had great discussions until now. Oh, but that uh, really cool. <laughs> yeah, the finding part is a little difficult for many people. I think usually it's just the right timing and uh, right situations that really help you out. But uh, you have to be quite persistent to find any other aspect of it. Right. And um, I maybe can open this and someone can put up their hand. Is anybody else uh, aware that their program either already has a um, internship or a work placement with uh, industry, for example, or you know that you will do that um, in the future? If that's the case, you can raise your hand and we can ask you a little bit about that. Yeah, Max? Uh, yes, okay, so working my thesis next semester, so I'm not working on that now, but uh, I there, there's an option in my program, I don't know, if it's similar to others, where I can choose to, instead of doing a normal course, I can do a project uh, research, like it's, it's like a mini researching uh, work over, it could be one, one study period or the whole semester. And I approached one of the teachers to see if I could do that. And um, now I'm working with the Danish Institute of Hydrology, and they they showed some interest in, some interest in me and a classmate of mine to work with us uh, in the wastewater treatment simulation topic. So, so I'm not working with them, but I'm collaborating with them, and they have been very generous in sharing uh, some softwares with us and guiding us into basically learning how to use this uh, modeling software. So, so far it's been great because I already have a little bit of experience in that. And I to that into uh, some job opportunities later next year. And that would be ideal, yes. So you are hoping that that will lead to some kind of employment later? From them. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, it, it does seem like a quite common um, experience for many people that they do some kind of uh, connection with an employer or an industrial placement or a research group. And then hopefully from that, some future opportunities come, which is always great when that happens. So brilliant. Um, okay, now we have a couple of questions being asked in the Q&A, which is wonderful. So the first question is, what other professional related activities are students involved in apart from internships? So I think that might mean, for example, careers networking, careers events, um, perhaps other um, activities that add to your skill set or your CV. So um, I'm going to open that up and just ask someone if you if you can think of something that you're doing that's related to that please do raise your hand. Otherwise, I'll just give some general information about the kinds of support we have. Ah, okay, yes, Prashant, would you like to say something? And then we'll go to uh, Yes, uh, I think uh, firstly, uh, when the, there are a lot of guest lectures, so I think those uh, guest lectures are a great way to network with uh, the people from the company, and then they are very happy to like take in your questions and connect you in LinkedIn, and uh, also like you can approach them for future opportunities as well. And besides that, I think um, I'm also uh, helping a, as a teaching assistant to a professor. So I think it's also a part of growing. Like I, I am like really enjoying on how like uh, other getting all the skills like uh, with communication with people, trying to uh, help all of like other students solve their problems. And I think those are also like preparing me for my future professional careers in some ways, and also or could be a good way to. Uh, uh, take to a duration towards academia in future as well so I think it's all about catching these small things and uh, uh, there's a little opportunities and that's how you can like uh, grow yourself into a better professional aspects for future I guess definitely and you managed to find a teaching uh, assistant position is that correct Yes, uh, so we were approached by our professor and then I was really interested in, in this course. So I just said, I mean, I, I would like to help you out with this and I'm really into it. So then, yeah, we had to go through the hiring process, but yeah, then I could uh, get the, it and I'm really enjoying it actually. 
That's great. And I think ghost positions are relatively rare in some senses, but also it is a sign of um, the way things are here that it's important to ask the question and talk to your professors and um, find out what opportunities there can be because yeah it won't be everybody that gets to do that but it's great when when your teachers can point you in the right direction towards something okay we'll go to Sude and then Gabriella if that's okay so Sude what yeah. are you going to uh I completely agree with what Prashant was saying about uh, we even my program does have a lot of guest lectures from the industries so it's actually better when because we are able to reach out to, to reach out to them by ourselves or by the with the help of the faculties whoever the professors are also recently we had a RCAD career event in faculty of engineering so it's one of the great opportunity to talk with uh, companies across the sweden to find out about summer jobs internships and maybe sometimes about the masters thesis uh, ideas as well and there are some other events which goes across the room like it's one there was one event which i was a part of it's known as climathon so it's about the sustainability approach we did a project on terms of in terms of uh sustainability approach towards the corridors but there are multiples in each and every year so yeah great wonderful and then gabriella i just want to add about the side visits in my program, we had like the opportunity to go to Nightcoret factory in Helsingborg. That's from Johnson and Johnson. So it was like really nice to see like how actually a pharmaceutical plant can work. That was like a great opportunity. And also we had the opportunity to do side business in, in small companies around Lund in Medicum Village. Great, that's really unique, I think, to be able to go and see that in person. Wonderful. OK, so we actually also had another question here um, about working, uh, finding jobs during studies. And I know that um, there's uh, like I think most of the people in this webinar, from what I understand, are not working part time um, because I guess that's a good lesson that it's not necessarily that um, common or easy to find part-time work alongside your studies but I know it can happen um, and especially if you're willing to look in Malmö as well for example which is nearby but we're always quite open about that um, to our prospective students that you should always bear in mind that you need to have a plan um, to support yourself uh, regardless of whether you can find a part-time job because there are a lot of students looking for those kinds of jobs and of course if you apply for a residence permit you have to um, show that you have enough funds to support yourself already without a job so that's just a couple of notes of caution when it comes to looking for work um, but yes I know that uh, was it um, Roger and Max is that right who also managed to continue working while they were studying, um, but with their work from previously. So perhaps Roger, you would like to tell us a bit about that and then I'll come to you, Max. How did you find it balancing your work with your studies? Because that is another reason why we sometimes, you know, say to students, be very thoughtful about working alongside your studies. Yeah, uh, I would say it's not uh, an easy task. Uh, you have to, plan a lot and have to be very uh, firm on your schedule because the course is very demanding when they say the, the master degree is a full-time commitment it really is so uh, because not only about the classes you have a lot of work to do together with your colleagues uh, to present to the to the professors you have to do a lot of reports and also of course you have exams so uh, to be able to work even part-time or in my case I, I'm working online on the previous job that I, I had before coming here uh, you have to, to be very good at planning and be able to, to try to also change a little bit how you live on different time frames because uh, when the hour here is very different from Brazil so I have to adapt also to that uh, but it's doable in the end uh, it's not impossible to to be able to do that that's good to know yeah there is also always that adjustment period as well and you can't underestimate that you will have uh, an adjustment period also um Max how did you find it you mentioned that you recently stopped working for 
that company. So yes, uh, well, I I stopped working a little over a month because I I was going to start these research projects and then my thesis. So I wanted to focus on that more because, as Roger said, it was very demanding to keep a, a part time job while uh, working on my masters. Uh, I was fairly scared when I first uh, moved in because I didn't know what to expect of the workload. I knew beforehand that uh, there is a lot of uh, balance between personal life and work. So I was hopeful. So and coming in, it was uh, nice uh, that to see that I was able to handle it. I would sneak out of classes sometimes to get into a meeting, but uh, overall, uh, it, it's, it's a nice balance of uh, work and uh, and personal life. Usually weekends are not that uh, full of academic stuff, so I could catch up on weekends as well. And uh, yeah, overall, it was a really nice experience. I, I really enjoyed it. And it was nice that my company back home was kind enough to uh, let me try this, this position, which is actually, I was the first one in my company to start this this position and now it's becoming more common within the company because we had a great experience so it was really good. That's great and I suppose that's also something that has now become a little bit more possible and more normal especially over the past couple of years with the idea of remote working you just have to obviously be aware of yeah. what you need to do regarding things like tax and stuff like that which we won't get into here but <laughs> brilliant okay and I can see that Priliani you raised your hand would you like to add something? Yeah, I just would like to add because uh, the question is regarding uh, the opportunity for part time in Loon as well. So I would like to say, yeah, there's many opportunities in Loon. For example, even I'm not taking part for part time job, but uh, I saw some uh, vacancy like for to be a student worker is kind of from from the international marketing of Loon University as well, or maybe another one is from the venture lab is kind of the yeah. Uh, organization who handle for for learn about entrepreneurship uh, so they they sometimes uh, there is available vacancy for student workers so yeah or maybe from the Lun, uh, Lun's commune but yeah we like what Max and uh, Roger already said before we have to try to manage our study and schedule first to be manageable for doing the part-time job as well yeah, and I believe um, all of you also volunteer to be unibodies as well, just like to help other students. So you have a lot on <laughs> already. <laughs> OK, um, we now have a question, and this is actually um, for sustainable energy engineering. So I'm going to direct this to Prashant, and it's about how flexible the curriculum is. Is it possible to design your own program, I guess? Um, design your own program sounds like very flexible but I, I suppose you can say something about how it works with electives and compulsory modules perhaps all right uh, I'm so happy a lot of people are interested in my program <laughs> but yeah to be fair like uh, we have uh, courses that are compulsory and those I think uh, you have to take them no matter what, uh, but uh, in the, uh, how, how do you call it, like second semester, like we, we have study terms here, so it's a bit different, but yeah, when we have the electives, we can choose uh, two of the electives for this uh, study term, or for one of the study term, that is on the, during the second semester, and when you are on your, so when you're on your third semester, you have choices for uh, the other electives as well. So, yeah, uh, basically, I mean, I don't think uh, you can completely design your own program. You have to, of course, like take the courses that are compulsory, but uh, for the electives, you have choices to choose from like, uh, I think there are a lot of electives and we can choose based on what you what interest you are. So, yeah, I think that's how it works uh, all together. Great. Thank you so much for giving uh, that person a little bit more information about that. Perfect. Oh, we actually have an add-on question now. Um, <laughs> so it's also still for you, <laughs> Prashant, and it says, are there tracks that focus on sustainable energy engineering? Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, wait a second. This question is just being edited. <laughs> um, okay, sustainable energy engineering in aerospace, uh, and also what kind of track you are on, Prashant? So I guess like 
you can say a bit about what your mm. interests are on. I don't know if you know anything about aerospace. Related yes, to your... uh, uh, I think regarding cracks, we had uh, like uh, they basically is a uh, like a guiding module. You don't have to like be stuck on any of these tracks. They're just like uh, courses that are more related. Like I think we had tracks on electric power systems and on the combustion engine. Uh, uh, numerical uh, dynamics of compression and modeling. So these are like a guiding guided tools for us. So we don't have to like stick to some specific track. Uh, you can like choose electives from different tracks as well. For example, for me, I took uh, electives on electric power systems and machine learning for energy engineers. So I think, I mean, there's no specific, like, I mean, how would I tell, maybe uh, like energy engineering for machine learning is completely different to uh, uh, computer science and data science stuff, while power systems is regarding electric, electric power. So we can mix up these tracks as well. And uh, regarding aerospace, uh, what I know a little bit, I guess, is we had a um, course in biomass where we talked about jet fuels. Uh, so maybe the, that could link a little bit on aerospace, I guess. And uh, also, I think there are a lot of uh, projects in Sweden that are going on where they're trying to uh, see the use of biofuels for jet engines. So maybe that could be a thesis area for you if you are interested on these things. And you can like uh, choose subjects that are related with uh, uh, with those kind of uh, uh, thesis projects or those kind of skill sets that you require. So yeah, I think that is all I can answer about the aerospace for, uh, at the moment. That was very helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, now I'm gonna just um, ask a question to everybody, and you can put up your hand. Do you think that uh, you need Swedish <laughs> to get by? Who has who has learned Swedish here so far? Has anybody done it? Yeah, Max and Gabriella and Prashant. Cool. So maybe Gabriella, I can ask you about your experience. Um, how have you found learning Swedish? Did you do SFI or what, what was your method of learning? Yeah, currently I'm learning SFE. That is Swedish for immigrants. That's what it means. And uh, I started in November last year. So it's almost like one year already. I think that now like that I know a little bit more Swedish is really useful mostly when I'm like in the supermarket or training stations, but here in Sweden, uh, everybody, almost everybody can speak English. So even if you don't know like any Swedish at all, you can manage yourself, like you can live really well. And I think that Swedish is a really interesting language. It's kind of a mix between German and English. So now like it's hard for me to pronounce and to learn the grammar, but I'm keep going. That's great. And um, yeah, it's really nice to know, like I I read a statistic recently that Sweden has something like the second highest proficiency in English as a second language in the world or something really crazy. And I think it was 90% of people in Sweden speak English. So it's definitely one of those nice things about coming to study. You can see that not everybody here on our panel today has learned Swedish and it's okay, but if you want to, you can. So that's quite nice. Max, did you also use SFE or did you use a different method of learning Swedish? Uh, well, uh, ever since I knew I was coming here over a year ago, I started with Duolingo actually. Yeah. I felt like a nice and easy way to start. But then I went on to have a Swedish course in the university. It was offered as part of my master's actually. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm actually doing SFE as well. I wanted to keep up with that. I, of course, as Gabriela said, it's not really necessary to, to speak Swedish while living in Lund, but um, I hear it's, uh, it gives you an edge if you're uh, willing to work here afterwards. So just in case to keep all my options open and I do uh, like learning Swedish, so I'm doing that, yes. Cool, thank you for sharing that. Um, now I also have another question because this is some of the kinds of things that we get asked sometimes, do you need to learn Swedish? And also another one is, um, is Sweden a safe place to live? Is Lund a safe uh, environment? So I think I might ask um, Priliani this because we haven't spoken for a little while. How do you feel about the safety in Lund? Do you live in Lund itself? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I live in Lund, and I have to say, Lund is really safety for me. It's really safe for me. I mean, for a certain uh, reason, maybe I have to finish my lab until at nine because uh, right now, uh, in my program, we are uh, doing project for product development, and then sometimes we did over overtime until nine or eight, and then it's already dark, but it's totally fine. I mean, even I'm just walking or not taking my bike or taking bus, but it's totally fun. And then uh, for a certain time also, uh, the transportation, I mean, if we want to take a bus, it's already, uh, it's available until 3 a.m. if I'm not wrong. So you don't have to be worried for, for traveling around Luni. That's good to know. And I mean, you did mention this earlier that it's a relatively small city. I think that helps. It makes it feel like very friendly. So that's really good. Um, okay, let's just talk a little bit about maybe other things you might enjoy doing outside of your study. So, I mean, I don't know what kinds of things you guys like. I would be curious to know what you do when you're not studying. For example, do any of you play sports or um, exercise or anything like that? Or perhaps you get involved with things like the nations or maybe you go hiking or something like this. Um, Roger, what do you do uh, in your spare time? Uh, I'm here for only a little bit more than three months, so I'm still uh finding, oh, you're still finding. interesting <laughs> interesting stuff to do, but I already have gone to some hikings. Uh Sweden's a very beautiful place for you to that love to go to nature to walk on around and and communicate yourself with nature uh and I, I do love that so it's a very nice place for you to explore uh but also i'm i like to play football so i found some other people that also like we are playing almost every friday uh I also love to read and to walk in the city to discover new places. So for me, it's been a very pleasant experience to just walk around the city uh, because it has a lot of different stuff to offer for you to just wander. Yeah, and like now as well, for those who are watching, uh, we're, we're holding this event at the start of December and it's very, um, it's getting dark and very Christmassy and there's all the lights that have just been lit in the city, which I think makes it very cosy at night. And even we had some snow <laughs> last week or the week before, so suddenly the atmosphere was changing again. But then in the summer, we also have like a really beautiful, well, you can actually see behind me and also behind Roger hear some pictures of the university at different times of the year so it's um yeah I agree I think it's just a nice place to hang around really <laughs> sometimes brilliant okay um and maybe I mean Swarup you've been here for longer <laughs> you you've been here for a couple of years so how how have you um what kinds of things do you do outside of your studies uh I'm afraid I don't really do much out or outside of my studies. I don't really like to go out in the cold weather. As I said, uh, it's a little too cold for me. Yeah, I come, that's from, fair uh, I come from a very tropical country. So I rather prefer to stay at home and cook something for myself for the day. And uh, I usually spend a lot of time playing video games if I do have any free time. My program is quite intensive and I don't really get much free time. So... Yeah, I'm not really one to go out per se, but I do love to travel. So I've been to a few places in and around Sweden. Mm, I cool. like to find uh, locations where there are not too many people visiting there. So I just like some solitude. So I usually go to reserve forests or uh, places that have museums, something like that. So really? Sweden does offer a lot of options in, these, in this regard. So yeah, for people like me, this is a good place. <laughs> I think that's so nice to know as well that it it's like depending on you as well what you want to do um but it's good that there are options I can see that both Sude and Prashant are raising your hand so Sude what would you like to add uh yeah so we we do have 13 student nations and it's amazing thing that if you are part of one you can still attain the activities from other student nations as well so they normally plan Swedish sittings which are really amazing thing then they do plan activities on Saturday, Sundays, which are like mostly hikes. 
uh, I also know that there are some museums over here. One of one of the museum which I don't remember the name, but it's famous for the arts um, in the town. So yeah, there are a lot of organizations which are like you can be, you can participate or visit, which is really amazing. Great, and to explain a little, the nations are like social kind of clubs, I guess you can say, where you can choose which one you join and then they run different uh, activities outside of studies. So great. And um, Prashant, what would you like to add? Uh, for me, I, I sometimes, I mean, I try to, I have a bunch of friends. We play badminton together here at the Victoria Stadium. And besides that, uh, we used to play football as well. Every we we would go up to Malmo to play football uh, every Sunday when the weather was better. But and then I also am a part of a student theater group here in Lund, and we have like these improv sessions where like we try to hang out with friends and do these little improvs, and also have some social events sometimes. Yeah, so those are also part of my student life. And uh, I think lastly, uh, the fun part of being at uh, Lund at such an international university is like people from all over the world, you can meet them. So we have this potlucks where we like bring dinner, like food from our countries and share together and have some cozy fika, uh, good conversation with friends. Yeah, so those are like part of extra things that I do as part of my student life. That's brilliant. That sounds so great. And I know, um, Priliani, you're part of an organization for Indonesian students. Is that right? So you've also been involved yeah. in those kinds of events, but for Indonesian students specifically. Yeah, that, that is right, Rebecca. Uh, I'm taking part in organization for Indonesian Student Association. Uh, so last year I'm taking part in Sweden uh, region but now for this year i'm taking part in the scona region so yeah um, one of activities other than study i i take part in organization and then also um last year i'm participate in one of the indonesian uh, dancing organization it's uh, located in malmo so in that time i also practice and also uh, present one of Indonesian dance in one of the event in Malmo. Oh, that sounds really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, we have another question here. Um, this person has asked about the weather in Sweden. Now, we already started to talk about this, and Swarup, you mentioned that for you, it's a bit cold. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it is something that lots of people are a bit concerned about. Um, and maybe we haven't heard from Gabriella for a little while. Maybe you want to say something about this. How did you find the weather here when you moved? And is there any suggestions or strategies that you can say helpful uh, are helpful when it gets colder, for example, in the winter? I think that for me, when I arrived here in Lund, it was really cold because my country was like hotter than, than here. But what I can say is that in Sweden, they have like a quote that says like, there is no bad weather, but bad clothing. So even if the weather is not like that nice, if you are prepared with a good raincoat, with a good sweater, boots, then you can handle the weather, I will say. And it's always like here in Lund, it's better like to buy a good raincoat than an umbrella because sometimes it's a little bit windy. So I would say that like, um, try to be prepared with wood, with wood, with good uh, clothing and also a good raincoat. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I totally agree. Like this saying of uh, no bad weather, just bad clothing is like very true. And I often forget it even now, even having been here many years, I still decide to go out one day wearing some coat that's like more fashionable. <laughs> Rather, <laughs> so I need a reminder of that sometimes. Um, Max, you've also been here a little while. How did you find the weather, and was there anything that helped? With the well, uh, from here in Chile, uh, well, depending on where in what latitude you live, it can get really cold as well. Right. Uh, yeah. So I wasn't that worried about that part, uh, since also Lund uh, doesn't get really that cold during winter I, I was I don't know first before coming here I would think of Sweden as minus a lot of degrees Celsius during winter and it's not that extreme at all um, 
what has uh, I, I have been struggling with the light. That's more or less what what affects me the most. Um, it is uh, you cannot ignore when it gets dark around four even earlier. So that part is a little um, weird at first. I, I've been growing accustomed to that though, and I've been taking vitamin D, so that's all good. Yeah, I also found that that was the change for me because I come from the UK, it's not very far. So the weather was quite similar. And like you said, it, it doesn't get like really, really cold compared to the UK. Um, it's similar, maybe a bit colder, but definitely I agree with the vitamin D. And also um, some people use a like a light, you know, like a daylight lamp. And I also embrace the coziness. That's my tip for anybody watching. Embrace the coziness, embrace the blankets and the like the um, candles and the fact that you have more downtime. Like for me, that's the way <laughs> that I handle this winter as well. And then you get the beauty of the summer and the long, long, long days and the, you know, trips out to the beach or the lake or whatever. So I always just think forward to when that happens as well later on in the year. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, I see you have your hand up today, but I also yeah. noticed that we're almost out of time. So I think we're going to have to move on to a last final summing up for everybody. So I would like to ask each of you just in like one very brief sentence, and I know that that's difficult, but if you can, to just say one thing that you would like people watching to know about your program um, or about why they should study here at Lund, um, just something to leave with them so that they can uh, have a message from each of you. So we'll go around and actually we can start with you today. <laughs> uh, uh, what would you like people to know? So if, if any of you are interested in learning about production developments and materials in comprehensive manner, from sustainability to how exactly the industries work, insights of the industries, this is the place to be. And yeah, of course, try to enjoy your studies and uh, get involved into group activities as much as possible. Yeah. Perfect. And then we'll go to Swarup. Uh, do you want to know how 5G and 6G work practically? How to even understand such complicated topics? You have to come and do a master's here. Perfect. Priyani? Yeah, I have to say like uh, Lund is very international uh, university, so you don't have to be afraid for everyone, of, all of you who come from other countries. And also if you would like to uh, go uh, to take the master's degree in food technology and nutrition, you are not only studying uh, about the scientific or technology thing, but you also learn about multidisciplinary aspect. Thank you. And Max? Uh, the water research, we, sorry, the water resources engineering program uh, offers a degree of customization so you can focus on one of the topics within the broad range of water engineering. So that has been great for me. Great. Roger? I would say that the logistics and supply chain management is a very broad topic. So uh, it's present on entirely the whole industry and services. So it's very easy for you to find something that's interests to you and challenges you at the same time to become better that, at that. How cool. OK, um, Prashant. Uh, regarding energy engineering program, I'd just like to say, like, come with an open mind. There are some subjects who you might not like it very much, but there is a reason that you study it, I would say. And like, come with an open mind to, to learn like overall aspects of energy and slowly you can like choose your electives and get specialized into something. So yeah, energy is uh, quite important for the future. And yeah, so that's I think <laughs> something I'd like to Totally. Yeah, we actually recently I've been broadcasting this today because the topic has come up a lot, but we recently received um, a QS uh, rate ranking of 12th in the world for sustainability. So this is like a very key topic, I would say right now. And many of your subjects will touch upon this, I know. Um, and finally, Gabriella, I think you're our last person to add something. Thank you for my program in pharmaceutical technology. I will say that 
this program can prepare you to work in the pharmaceutical industry, but also do research. So if you like both things like me, then you will find like this program is really interesting and complete. Brilliant. Oh, thank you all so much for being here with us today and for sharing your experiences. Um, there was a lot of us, so I really appreciate you all being able to, you know, share a little bit about each topic. Um, I've left a couple of um, uh, links in the chat, which I would like to draw um, anybody watching draw your attention to that. There's a link to talk to our Unibuddies because you might want to speak more to some of the people who you see here in front of you today or to other Unibuddies, other um, representatives from different um, programs, for example, that aren't represented today um, or just other students with a similar um, like history to yourself or something like this. So feel free to check out our Unibuddies um, page and get in touch with some of our students to continue these conversations and then also um i've left the staff link here as well for contacting my office and we can help you with any questions to do with um for example the application process perhaps a little bit regarding eligibility and what that might mean for your um, country of study, for example, um, and also just any other questions that you might have, um, we can always find, direct you to the right place. So that is um, everything from us today, but I just want to thank again all of the um, panelists here that we have in front of us and also everybody who came and attended as um, as a participant today and we really hope that we will see some of you inland uh, in the future uh, please let us know if you have any other questions and until then we'll say goodbye for now bye bye thank you thank you bye bye, thank you. bye. bye.